iOS users have become accustomed to using Siri to get things done, and it has been the best assistant available on the platform. However, Google recently launched the Google Assistant on iOS devices. When it comes to Android, Google Assistant is the clear winner. But does Google Assistant hold its own on an iPhone as well? Hey guys, I'm Akshay from vbomb.com and in this video, we'll check out how the Google Assistant fails when it crosses over to iOS and loses the home advantage. This is not a comparison against Siri. It's just a video on what the Google Assistant is capable of doing on Siri's turf. So let's get started. Launching Google Assistant on the iPhone is not as intuitive as it is on Android. You can't use the OK Google hot word to launch the Assistant. On an iPhone, you can either launch the Google Assistant app or you can use the Assistant widget to launch the Assistant. Siri, on the other hand, can be invoked with the Hey Siri command or by long pressing the home button. Let's check if the Assistant can schedule meetings for us and set up reminders, etc. OK Google. Create an event in my calendar. When is the event? Tomorrow at 10. What's the title? News discussion. Okay, do you want to save this? Yes. Okay. Okay, Google. Remind me about the news discussion at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Okay, do you want to save this? Yes. Okay. Okay, Google. Set an alarm for 7 a.m. tomorrow. The Google Assistant can do the regular things like setting up meetings and events, creating reminders just like it could on Android. However, on iOS, Google Assistant cannot set alarms because it doesn't have access to the clock app. One of the most common things users do with their assistants is launch and interact with other apps. So let's check where the Google Assistant stands in that regard. OK Google, launch Chrome. Opening Chrome. OK Google, launch WhatsApp. Sorry, I'm not sure how to help. Maybe try asking a different way. It's clear that the assistant can launch Google apps, but not third-party apps, thanks to restrictions iOS places. Okay, Google, navigate to Connaught Place. All right, Connaught Place. Let's go. Okay, Google, send an email to Rupesh. Check the main document. Got it. Do you want to send it or change it? Send it. Sending email. Assistant uses the Gmail app to send the mail, but isn't able to automatically send the email. You'll have to send the email manually. Siri, on the other hand, sends the email automatically. Hey Siri, send an email to Rupesh. What's the subject of the email? Document. What would you like your email to say? Check the main document. Here's your email message to Rupesh Sinha. It says, check the main document. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, Akshay, I'll send it. Let's see how the Google Assistant handles interacting with system settings on the iPhone. Okay, Google, turn off Wi-Fi. I can't change Wi-Fi settings on iPhones. OK Google, turn off Bluetooth. I can't change Bluetooth settings on iPhones. OK, so the Assistant can control system settings like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Weirdly enough, it can change brightness and volume settings. OK Google, increase the volume. All right. OK Google, increase the brightness. OK, it's brighter. One of the best things about the Google Assistant is the accessibility features it offers. With the new update, you can set shortcuts for commonly used complex commands. You can just tap on the drawer icon, 
then tap on the three dot menu button and go to settings. Here you can scroll down and tap on shortcuts. You can use the plus button to create shortcuts. Here is one that I have created. This means that every time I say OK Google party time, the assistant will start playing music by the chain smokers. Another great feature that Google Assistant has but Siri does not is keyboard interaction. In a public place, you may not want to look like an idiot trying to get Google Assistant to recognize you. That's where the keyboard comes in handy. Just type out the command and you're done. To wrap this video off, we decided to do a rapid fire round, pitching the same queries to both the assistants and seeing which one gives more relevant answers. And here we go. What does my day look like? This evening, you have two all-day events. Want to hear the details? No. Hey, Batman, here's a look at your evening. It is 6.58 p.m. Currently, in New Delhi, it's 38 with haze. Turn on Do Not Disturb. Okay, I've turned on Do Not Disturb. According to Apple support, tap settings greater than Do Not Disturb and turn on Scheduled. Read my latest WhatsApp message. There aren't any new messages. According to WhatsApp, for any message that you send, you will be able to see... I wanna play a game. Game's coming right up. You can play one of these games. Show me my email. You have at least 25 emails since yesterday. Here are the latest three. The latest was sent at 3.43 p.m. from USTRA. I found this in your Gmail. Well, those were some of the things that the Google Assistant is capable of doing on iOS. So do you think the Google Assistant is useful on an iPhone? Do let us know in the comment section below. Also, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. That was all from my side. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.